I don't think you need to be a musician to be a composer. Nope. You know, I'm not very good at playing any instrument. I mean, I played lots of instruments, but I wanted to make music as a composer before I learned anything about how to play an instrument. I think what happens, though, um, I think everybody can be a composer. And I think really everybody can be a musician. Whether or not you can be a good composer or a good musician, that's up to you. But I think whenever anyone listens to a pop song and you go, um, yeah, I really like this, I really like that, oh, that chorus is too long, you know, that's composition. Yeah. So when you hear something and you evaluate it and you, um, and you question it, about whether or not it works for you, that's composition. So um, what happens is I think we, we tell ourselves that only some people can do it. And there are certain things that only some people can do. There's some experience that you need to get in order to be able to do something. You know, it's like in order to write for orchestra, you need a huge amount of sophistication to learn how the instruments work and how they balance. And you know, that just takes practice. Mm -hmm. But that impulse of being able to judge when music satisfies you, that's the core of composition. And that's something that I think everybody has. The, the, the break between musicians and composers, I think, is more interesting, because I think we, um, we like that break. You know, I mean, I think we, we built that break, composers built that break, because it made us feel like we were special, you know? Like, um, like there's um, like a mountaintop, and we're sitting on the top of the mountain, and, you know, and all these performers are sitting around at the bottom of the mountain looking up at us for wisdom, you know? Waiting. Yeah, waiting for us to say something, you know, intelligent to them that will let them know what to do, you know? I don't, I don't buy that. You know, and in all of my working with musicians, I've, um, I've tried really hard to be um, an equal. My teachers were modernists, so my teachers were from this era that believed that composers were gods who walked the earth and we knew secret thoughts and, um, and only a few people in the world were ever going to be um, educated enough to, um, to know how great we were, right? That, that part of our, our greatness as composers was um, by um, remaining hidden. You know, we're going to hide our genius, right? And that way everybody will, will know that we're geniuses. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, there's a lot of great music written that way, so I don't want to make fun of it. But, um, but what that did to the audience and what it did to the players is it put them in a very subservient um, and a very um, unpleasant kind of position. Mm -hmm. So since I've become a professional, I've wanted to um, get away from that. You know, I, I really think... If the point of music is to communicate, if it is to share something, I have to have something better to share than I know a secret and you don't know it. You know, that's not a very good thing to share, right? Yeah. You know, um, I think. Um, although there's lots of great music that's made that way. Um, but for me, if the point of it is communicate, to communicate, I want my listener to know that, um, that their participation is necessary, and I want my players to know that too. My pieces are really hard, and, um, and they're really hard for a specific reason, which is uh, um, I've spent a huge amount of time thinking about why we have live performance. You know, why, why do we go to live performance? You can go on the internet and, you know, I can, I can go to Spotify and I can listen to any piece of music ever made, perfectly recorded and perfectly balanced, you know, in the comfort of my own home. And I can be in my pajamas and I can be drinking a beer and, you know, why would I ever want to leave the house, you know? So if live performance is going to live, it needs to have a... Um, or a, a thing that you can only get there, you know. It needs to have some reason um, why it exists, which is separate from what you can get listening to the music. It has to be something other than the musical experience. So part of that is community, of course. You know, it's really great to hear music with other people. And when there are, um, I mean, I remember being in concerts where a performer did something on stage and everyone in the audience gasped at the same time because it was so beautiful. And those things can happen by yourself. You know, that's really amazing. That kind of community of listening is really fantastic. So that's one thing to do live. But I've always thought one of the other things that you can only see live is, um, is struggle. When you have something recorded in the studio and, and it's balanced perfectly and you've done a thousand takes to make sure that everything is right and you've sculpted out the notes that didn't work and sculpted in the notes that do, um, you never hear anybody fighting. 
you never hear um, the thing that I think is the most interesting about hard music, which is that um, someone is suffering to do that. You know, someone's overcoming something. And sometimes someone isn't overcoming it. You know, sometimes somebody's working really hard and it's too hard. And that's really human. You know, that's actually really expressive to have somebody doing something that's really on the edge of what they can do. And their ability to do it is, is not known to you in advance, right? You're watching them, you're projecting yourself into them, and that reminds you of the struggles in your life where you're trying to do something. You know, that's very emotional for me, and that's very expressive and very human. That's something that you can only get by making music really hard. So, so to me, I've, I've tried um, lots of different ways to make the live experience necessary, because to me, that's my favorite part of the experience, is the live concert, not the recorded part. All music was new once, you know? So everything that happened, happened for the first time sometime. So I think the classical music designation is a little misleading. And it makes us kind of build an institution that, um, that isn't really helpful, you know? We don't listen to Beethoven anymore for what's new in it. We just listen to it for what's familiar. Um, we don't listen to um, Mozart operas, for example. Um, we listen to them for the beautiful melodies, which we know. We don't listen to them for how radical it is to make an opera like The Marriage of Figaro where the rich people are ridiculed, where the ordinary people are the heroes, um, and where people talk about their real lives and, and their emotions and sex and, um, and politics and money and, and what an incredible triumph that is for um, truth-telling.